God. I know, and you're trying to make me take this podcast. <laughs> Well, everyone, welcome to another episode of the podcast. What is this? Episode three. three. Today is Saturday, December 6th, 2024. Uh, happy New Year. Happy New Year's, everyone. I don't know if I wish you guys a happy New Year. I don't know when that last pod came out. I think uh, it was on New Year's Eve. Uh, was, was it the day before? It was before we came. So it had to have been New yeah, Year's Eve. Like yeah, so happy New Year's, everyone. Um, Late. Okay, um, hey guys, I just want to apologize that the camera falls so much. Um, we were driving back from Colorado when we recorded this. Um, it was kind of forced, but I think it's some pretty good, um, some pretty good content. I don't want to get rid of it, and I kind of, I just want to use it. Um, need to put something out this week, so this is what's going out this week. If you can deal with it, I really appreciate that. Um, if you can't, my bad. I'll do better next time, uh, but enjoy, guys. 0.5. Thank God for 0.5, Cam. Thank God for Apple. So today's and podcast, Apple. actually, I know short story. Thank God for Apple. I need to send a letter to the person who uh, invented Find My iPhone. Fuckers. So basically, I'm gonna just add this short story that I'm just gonna record this on my computer later. We're just we're scrapping. We're gonna go this later. is the test. Run. Yeah, I'm just gonna add so this excerpt this, in. And if we want to add more um, conversation, like. Topics. About the Bitcoin. So this podcast is about the Bitcoin ETF. I'll, I'll add that in there. I'm actually gonna have to edit this video, um, unfortunately. But anyway, so at the ski resort, I was on the gondola. I was recording a little vlog moment because we tried to vlog as much as the ski trip as we could. And Too cold. it was yeah, it was so cold. And I think I was just getting ready to get out the gondola so fast and trying to put my gloves on and stuff that I must have just sat my iPhone down on the bench because somebody grabbed my phone okay and they started taking selfies on it a couple they called my girlfriend okay and told my girlfriend where my phone was gonna be and then i guess it was a, it looked like maybe a snowboarder i don't know so and then someone else took a selfie on my phone too and um why i say thank god for finding my iphone because i'm standing there about to buy hot chocolate in the lodge and i feel for my phone it's not there i started freaking out it's panicking nick's like yeah if it's gone, it, nigga, I just want you to know, like, that shit's gone. Yeah, like, there's no way he's gonna find it on the mountain. Bro, he was preparing me for the worst. <laughs> and so we, we used Find My iPhone, because, you know, Nick has my location. And we tracked it down to the gondola. We were, like, we were sprinting up, trying to get in line. And then we, it was maybe the fastest that we skied all day. We got down there so quick. <laughs> I, think, I think I straight, we straight lined the blue to get down there. Just, just zoom in. I don't in. think we're allowed to, but, you know. And it was, it was, it was yeah, because it was in the slow zone. It was a little bit carved out, so I mean, we, we were definitely, we threw caution to the wind, but we found the phone. It was sitting with the with the lifty, he made me open it up, and, but that's our story. Oh, he Thank, made you unlock it? Yeah, he made me he unlock didn't it. tell me that. No, yeah, no, he, because he, I'm not make, on my... Just to make sure it was you? Yeah, because I'm not on my on my home screen, and yeah. so he, he made me unlock it, and I was, I was like, oh, bet. He was like, oh, bet. <laughs> Gave me a fist pound, and that was, that was it. But uh, then after that, we skied fast, ripped ass, because I had some Wait. barbecue. Bro, I was farting after that barbecue. Oh, you know, yeah, in that ski suit, bro, I was just, I was like letting it out. Like, like when, right. I, yep. when I would hit a bump, like the fart would just go. <laughs> so serious. You know how many bumps we hit? Oh, yeah. I was we did like, full moguls all day. After that barbecue, I was, I was ripping ass. <laughs> it was good, though. But, hey, barbecue on the mountain, low key. But what'd you get? I got the brisket sandwich. It's expensive as fuck though. Yeah, you need to use your epic pass. Yeah, I got like four or five bucks off. Hey, if you're going skiing, I would definitely recommend getting an epic pass. Um, it's a hundred percent worth the money. If you're gonna spend any money on the mountain, you instantly save, like, get the money back and save it. So, it's it's worth it. Um, but this today's episode. Sponsored Oh, uh, is it sponsored by Epic? <laughs> they could. Imagine. Hey, Epic, if you're hearing this, I really, really appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, we love you. We we we'll love you. We we'll love to ski every year. Yeah, man. What would I? What would I do? I, I maybe I'd sell my soul. <laughs> yeah. Just for a, a sponsorship from Epic? Well, imagine that'd be a. a, a, a oh, Epic Pass. Wait, what company makes it? Because it's not Epic. Epic is that gaming company. I think it's Vale Resorts. I think the company Vail? is Vale Resorts. Yeah, we'll have to look this up. But yeah. I, I'm pretty like sure. Mm -hmm. And the Epic Pass is just like. 
or is it Epic Mountains? I don't know. It's either Vail Resorts or Epic Mountains. But once you get that Epic Pass, imagine if we had a years long Epic Pass. Oh, I'd be up here all year, bro. As much as I possibly could. That's like most of the price of skiing is lift tickets. Probably about. 35, 40% of the ski trip is lift tickets. Lift tickets a thousand. Yeah. So you let you eliminate lift tickets, bro. Epic. I know you hear me. Anyway, Nick, can you give us a little financial update for today? A little how, financial how, update? Yeah, how's the market looking? Um, is it time to invest? Is it time not to invest? What do you think? Well, <laughs> um, I guess more talk about, we want to talk about what's going on with our economy. Because that's what's going to affect everyone's decision on if they want to be put in the market. Because 2023 was a good year, but there was a lot of money that was left on the sidelines, and people were waiting because people were thinking that the big crash was going to happen or we're going to have another recession. But we had it. We did so have a recession. What do you mean by people by money held on the sidelines? Like people keeping money in their savings accounts? Or? Savings accounts, just. Uh, I'm not putting in stocks, so mm. they would just hold it in their brokerage accounts, and most brokerage would be able to put that money in money market firms, and then we earn uh, a percent yield on your money held in those firms. Mm. And so, it really depends on where you get it at. Uh, savings accounts usually get really, really low, sometimes below yeah. point, uh, 1%, but if you have it in your brokerage account for stocks and bonds or whatever, most companies will offer 5% right now, but mm -hmm. that will go down when the Fed will start cutting interest rates. That's why everyone started putting money on the sidelines since interest rates started going up due to inflation. So, so the more the Fed's cut interest rates, there's less of an incentive to keep your money mm -hmm. in a brokerage in a, account? In a money market firm, and more to put in bonds, yields, treasuries, gold, Bitcoin, all, just assets, buy real estate, because real estate will start to be cheaper because you'll be able to finance it cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's just a better time to be able to buy things more prosperous. Okay. But you also have to be cautious because with spending, you can still get inflation, so still go back. Yeah, because isn't that just going to cause just more spending in America? Yeah, because yeah. Well, I guess like right now we're in a, a tug of war. People don't know if we're going to get a soft landing or a hard landing meeting uh, with rampant inflation and people, uh, the wage gap, which is currently closing uh, slowly. But uh, I think. Yeah, a lot of states this year in 2024 yeah. raised their minimum wage. Who were we talking about that got $3 extra per hour? Uh, mm. What? There was some fast. Oh my, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but. Some big companies uh, started to raise up their prices for how much you're earning per hour and the standard of uh, earning. So maybe like that some, will help. And I, I think I saw that well, it might have been Washington State. It was or something It was definitely a state on the West Coast um, and raised their minimum wage all the way up to like seventeen point two five or it's, it's, it's like it, it, it's like calculated to be like seventeen thirteen or seventeen point two whatever, right? But that's a lot of money. Yeah. Seventeen dollars minimum wage is insane. So do you do you think that I mean but the, the federal minimum wage is still at what seven fifty an hour? Seven 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 twenty five? So it, I mean it, do you think that I we think need to so. raise that? Um, and, or or like what, what do you think is the, the issue to or what do you think is a, a fix? To, to solve like this gap between yeah. prices going up and people not earning enough. Yeah, exactly. Uh that it's really honestly it goes down to I guess I wouldn't even say the consumer it's the the people who are selling products uh, the big companies because they are the ones that dictate how much um, to sell the product at but then that gets dictated on the taxes and so who are the big companies like Apple and everyone all oh, like yeah Apple Microsoft Amazon okay um, any any big any big company, a pharmacy company, just really, it's all about the supply chains, about how much, uh, how fast they can get over, how cheap is it, um, the labor costs, all of it. That all gets, yeah, that all gets broken down, and then we get, what we get charged for is not for the cost of the materials, basically most of it is shipping and all of the, uh, getting but I mean, also, it, it, across the world. Yeah, it's production's so expensive. I mean, so many companies are trying to move out of China right now. Really, you can't see that. It's starting to get, yeah. yeah. It's starting to get for, um, the, the Too far. Yeah, that's the other. other. Oh, you have those? Oh, you want these ones? Yeah, let me see if those are. Okay. Um, so that's better. 
They're a little bluer. Oh, yeah, these are yellow tinted. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, a, a lot of companies are, are, are moving out of China for that reason. Right mm -hmm. there, because you know well, the, the minimum wage in China is going up, and so it costs more to produce there. Mm -hmm. So, do you not think that just increasing the minimum wage? overall just makes it more expensive to produce goods and just it, it's just going to cost americans and it just inflation is just going to go even higher right because if you if goods are more expensive to produce or like, well, like where's the the first place that feds could make a regulation to like right now in this week a regulation that they could make like so do you think it's supply chain focused or do you think it's more wa a wage gap focused? so you know what, I mean? like, what, what do you think it is they're focusing more on the jobs right now mm -hmm. and uh I mean, unemployment's on an all-time low. Uh, yeah, we actually have the most jobs um, available right now. Yeah, I forgot how many jobs we put on the job list this year, but it's one of the most in the past couple of years because it's been really bad. But that was the whole point. That was what Jerome Powell was trying to do, was um, make people kind of that, um, cut, cut jobs, cut, uh, cut their staff, and reallocate money. Mm. Um, but now people are starting to hire again because interest rates starting to go down and people can afford to get loans and afford to spend money. If if Jerome Powell gets the soft landing that he's been trying to do for the past year and a half, then he'll probably be the best um, Fed chair in history. There's yeah. been no other Fed that's done this because if you look at the 2008 um, crisis, the, the Great Depression, the, the bank run in I think it's 2018, mm -hmm. um, all those crashes, those are due to poor decisions by the Fed. End up not making the right decisions, and we got even greater uh, downturns. We got hard landings, and blah blah blah. So I understand what you mean now. So, so the, the soft landing is so we don't have a big crash. Big, like yeah, we don't have a big recession. Or got it. So, so that's why they're trying to cut interest rates slowly. Slow. Got mm -hmm. it. Got and it. And they've been slowly managing. I think it, what took a while was the housing market because they, what they look at is gas, electricity, housing market. Um, GDP there's so many more others but the most important one is usually gas um, um, I think the GD, yeah the GDP is the second most important one they'd be looking at those to determine what they're going to do if they're going to cut or um, increase or just remain neutral because they can't just from, um, they don't have to cut or um, increase rates they can just stay the same just keep them they did that a couple months ago, back in November, hmm. November, August, somewhere there, because the numbers were coming out from the CPI data, yeah. um, that the inflation was going down, we all saw oil and gas, we were getting cheaper gas Yeah, now. oil prices were good, mm -hmm. Biden was saying Bidenomics is working. But then that. you have to look at everything else, your, your food prices are all going, everything else is going up, and the only reason why oil was going down is because, A, you had... Um, First, you had the Ukraine war, which made oil shoot up ridiculously more yeah. since Russia and Ukraine were. We're buying a lot of oil from Russia. Plus, from the Black Sea, you can't really. Um, in the Mediterranean Sea, you can't. Well, you can't, uh, move you can't ship. Yeah, you, you can't, can't ship, ship anything. anything through the Red Sea right now because uh -huh. the UT rebels in Yemen are just yeah, shooting that's everything. Another thing. Mm -hmm. That's what's causing gas to go back up. Now we're seeing it back at three dollars. But I guess this is starting to become a normal. Like, do you think we'll really see gas go back below two dollars? I think I think what a lot of Americans don't like is the, the instability, right? Because the American economy is, it, it's almost, it's volatile now, right? Mm -hmm. Like gas prices are volatile. They go up and down. I get like a, a, like a cryptocurrency, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and so I, I think that's the, the biggest thing is how do you provide Americans more stability in prices for when they go to the grocery store, they know every time this can of tuna is going to be 99 cents. Yeah. And they don't know that. And so they know that, hey, next week it's not, it's going to be a dollar eight. And then next week it's going to be 95 cents. No, no, no. They want it to be 99 cents every time. <laughs> yeah, so how do, how do you wish. do that? You know what I mean? And provide consistency in your economy with, you know, like like you're saying, uh, the, the war in Ukraine with, you know, with, with these things that are from the outside affecting our economy. So how do you provide consistency when you have so much stuff from the outside, you know, messing and poking with our economy? Yeah. Um, that's a very hard question. That's, <laughs> like, honestly, that's such a broad answer yeah, it, it could be it's a lot of different variables a lot yeah. of different things you can do uh, like, that can so be a whole podcast parties. in itself yeah. maybe, maybe we'll, we'll pin that we'll, oh we'll god pin that. <laughs> <laughs> a, 
How do you um, provide consistency in the American economy? Because, like, you can't really, you can't predict outside forces of what that's going to do to, you know, the dollar and people. Are, yeah. The reason why American dollar is the number one currency is people use it. Uh, it's supposed to use currency out of all the other ones. All throughout Latin America. Yeah, if we back uh, all, like, all of it. Explain the Bitcoin ETF. What is they, going on there? Uh, y'all probably heard a crap ton about the Bitcoin ETF. There's, there's, news there's so much out there from CNN and, and MSNBC and Fox, and they're all saying different things. What okay. is, like, what is it? What's going on? First, I think you're at the... Before you even look at what Bitcoin is, because people like to compare Bitcoin and stocks, which are they're not the same at all. Um, with stocks, you're buying ownership into a company or buying shares. And so the more shares you have, the, you can be put on the board, you have a say in what they do, blah, blah, blah. But for crypto, and this goes for Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the altcoins, all everything, blockchains, the way their value that is you're buying the value so bitcoin if right now i think it's at 43 it's hovering around 43 42 that's the value of the network and so you're buying into the value of the network and that's what uh bitcoin is so that's why they call it digital gold mm -hmm. i get it because the value of gold goes up and down like the value of bitcoin yes. goes up and down also bitcoin is a fixed uh supply you can't print more Bitcoin, you can't mint more Bitcoin, you can't do nothing. There's only, I think it's 21 million Bitcoin, and you can't change that. So, just like gold, well, unlike gold, we, we might be, you know, you know, Elon Musk might discover more gold on Mars one day, yeah. or we might, I mean, there's going to be constantly mining of gold, and it's not, it's, yeah, it's a limited resource. But because um, there's a fixed supply, it creates scarcity. Mm -hmm. so, so, over that's time, why you with get a price the having it every four years, and what the having is, Y'all probably definitely heard about that on the news. And if not, what it is, it's a set mechanism for Bitcoin to basically lessen the supply given out. So, like I said, there's 21 million supplies. How Bitcoin works, it's a big network. Think of it as a, a ledger, a digital ledger. And so, there is thousands, multiple, hundreds of thousands of computers that are running this, that are running different source code. Okay. And... That's what Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, all of it is. It's just data and code. Uh, it's all with mathematics. That's why it's you can't disprove it. It's supposed to be the best uh, form of currency. So because yeah, because the code is written into happen, the having is already written into happen. Mm, into the it's gonna happen every four years like a cycle. So so therefore naturally Bitcoin and all these other coins they naturally have to go up mm -hmm. as long as there's money in the supply. Mm -hmm. Because the supply will start going down and more people holding it, you can't it'd be less. And eventually... Like, so, what you, so what you hold becomes... More over time. Okay. But this is going to take years. Like, we won't see it in, in our lifetime it being finished. I think uh, it's like 22,100 or... It's, it's a long time. We won't see it. And maybe our for there to be no more Bitcoin. It. Yeah, for the having to stop. For the miners to stop mining... Uh, to stop being paid in Bitcoin. Because there's going to be no more Bitcoin in the supply for them it's, to mine. Mm -hmm. And so, so then, what, then Bitcoin just becomes a currency that people just use after that? Um, so, it Because really then depends. there's so much money just in a, in a supply. Yes, but... But then you can't mine any more Bitcoin. Like, what happens after that? Honestly, I don't. I don't really know what happens after the, like, after the having stuff. I don't... I don't it's think such a long time. Yeah, I don't think you research on that. I've never... Never looked that up. That'd, yeah. be, that'd be a great thing to research. But that's 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 Bitcoin. We'll save that. We'll save a that. whole Bitcoin talk for a whole segment because we can start at why the ETF is important. Because think about when like I can show you a chart and stuff like that, and you can put it up on your video. Okay. Because then people will understand that oh, Bitcoin is not just you know so just what, this random thing. That what is thing. the ETF? What what does that mean? Because I think that's the the confusing thing. Bitcoin ETF. Uh, what is an ETF? It means that basically these all these funds, so there's ETFs in the stock world, meaning um, a fund will buy whatever, they will manage that ETF, they'll buy the stocks, and uh, when you buy ETF, there's JP, let's say JP Morgan has their own ETF. They might call it like JPB, it'll be like an ETF that has Bitcoin in it, specifically the Bitcoin in 
other volatile assets. So could they do like an ETF specifically for an airline or? For air, yeah, they, okay, well, they, okay. there are there are ETFs. Uh, for I get that. it. So, but this ETF is specifically for a big company to buy a large Bitcoin. amount of Bitcoin. Be able to add Bitcoin to their ETF or make a Bitcoin specific ETF. But so that's what the wait, legislation needs to be passed to say. Kind of. Wait, hold on. Wait. So there's already been other ETFs passed. So there's a futures. You can buy Bitcoin futures. But you're buying. You're basically buying and predicting like. Bitcoins is that's a huge amount. I would never recommend that personally. Um, it's not financial yeah, advice. Yeah, not financial advice. <laughs> but um, the reason why this ETF is so huge and why everyone is, I guess, quote unquote, hyping it up and saying this is will, will bring institutions into Bitcoin and bigger money is because it's a spot ETF. And what that means is when a when you when a spot ETF is created, they buy the asset from whatever. And you're buying, so let's say BlackRock wants to make their own Bitcoin ETF. They have to physically own the asset to, to have that ETF. So they have to go in and buy Bitcoin from supply. So that's what's going to bring all this new money in. So we'll maybe see a 100 billion, 300 billion come in really fast. Some people are saying trillions, but you really, you really never know exactly so is it that how you much can do money. spot ETFs for other things right now, but you can't do it for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is um, they haven't classified it yet uh, in the SEC. They they have they're going back and forth. They've said it's a commodity, but Gary Glenser kind of has a stick up his ass. Sorry, and he <laughs> needs to figure out what he wants to do with crypto because he's been the main like. In our, like, it's kind of, it's kind of, yeah. the, it's kind of the, the question. Do you want to consider something that is digital a hard asset? Because mm -hmm. ultimately, it's digital. But do you want to consider is it this a commodity or a security? Yeah, we need to update SEC. The current rules don't really go over this new technology, and they just have to update it. But then that's Congress's job. Congress's job has to be able to uh, be the one to change the, change the law. Change the law. SEC can't. They're just under the con. Like, yeah. They're one of the eight. Uh, they're not one of the agencies, but um, they can't physically change the law. And so all they can do is just read the law and interpret it the best they could. And the law really does not cover crypto. And that's why yeah. there's so much unregulatory uncertainty and why companies are not coming to U.S. for crypto innovation. They're moving away because. Got just, it really bad regular regulatory space but we need to change the law and regulate uh -huh. it to keep the commerce here in the uh -huh. u.s so we can so it can flourish because why would we want that to go away from the u.s we want innovation and new technology yeah, absolutely. here to help boost our economy yeah uh, we don't want to drive those people away yeah because then we're buying it from great britain we're buying it from china uh -huh. and that's where they're moving to is um australia britain um even Mexico, depending on now, on who you are. Uh, but a lot of people are still trying to stay in America. We still got um, Coinbase. We got some of the smaller companies that are DeFi companies. But I can't remember really about this. Yeah, that's why. It's not financial advice <laughs> at all. Um, uh, wow. Okay, Nick. I, I, that that was that was really really insightful. That was probably for a sprag, and I can clean that up later when we make the whole one. Man, I feel like I learned so much. I might just edit this up and post this kind of raw. Uh, Honestly, turn the camera to that way. Holy fucking shit. I slowed down so you can see that. Wow. Wow. Now that is weird. That's a view. This is what we've been driving through this whole time. It's just been... It's been nice. Damn, that looks so nice. Wow. This mountain range is beautiful. Where are we? Oh, Colorado Springs. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm about to uh, take a nap, guys. Um, I think we recorded a lot of content. That How long have we been talking? 30 minutes. Oh, wow, this is the longest pod I think I've ever recorded. Um, definitely Shit, I forgot to say this at the beginning. Um, thanks for watching. Welcome to the podcast. Um, this podcast is intended for my friends, family, girlfriend, uh, brothers, uh, uncle. You guys don't know me. You guys don't know Nick. You guys don't know our full political opinions. Our full. Uh, you, you guys don't just don't know us, right? And so just keep that in mind as you're watching this. Um, 
lot more if I'm putting this at the end and I'm not editing it. After you watch this, keep that in mind. Um, also, let us down, let us know in the comments below if you hated it, loved it, um, wants to talk about something specific. Yeah. Um, and also, if, you know, if you, if you just got like a little piece of information to drop, you know, like a, a, a source, you know, a, a video, uh, I mean, we'll definitely check it out. Always. But until next time, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Peace. Bye.